welcome. I'm Spoolful. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to install one of my one-piece fiberglass rear bumper fillers. Uh, not a lot to it. They're fairly simple, fairly cut and dry, but I'm just going to show you a couple tricks to uh, save some time and not uh, hurt yourself lifting off a heavy bumper and, I don't know, just what I've learned. Uh, before I get into that, uh, one thing I want to say, whether you buy mine or someone else's bumper filler, and this goes for front and back, do not buy uh, from a junkyard, pick up an old 25 year old one that looks beautiful or buy from someone online that's giving you a screaming deal or eBay or whatever uh, on an original even though the ad says I just took it off the car it looks beautiful you're gonna get it home and within a few weeks it's gonna look like this once these things get 25 years old or more they just fall apart and crumble under their own weight um, it's just the nature of the stuff is life limited. This is a California car. It's only got about 80,000 miles on it. Garage kept. When we took these off a few months ago, they looked beautiful. The originals, within a few weeks, I had them set naturally. They just crumbled. So that's what they do. Don't buy those. Uh, either buy one of mine or buy one off one of the vendors on TurboBuick.com. Uh, but don't think you're going to be saving money getting an original. You're going to buy it, send it off, have it painted, and you're going to be in it all the money. And for the price, the used one, the paint, you could have bought one of these in the first place. And this is the last virtually forever until you get an accident the fiberglass you can, you can fix them so with that um, I think we're ready to change out a bumper filler so here we are We've got the car uh, like I had mentioned the bumper you want to get someone to help you with the bumper do not try and do this yourself you want to get someone big and strong to help you do that I couldn't find anyone big and strong but I did find the car owner John Sleevy here hey. to, uh, <laughs> to help me take it off so um, beautiful car can you tell us a little about it yeah you know this car is uh, my daily driver uh, it's kept in the garage it's 25 uh, years old and uh, it's got the a regular paint job on it uh, but it still has scuff marks and things like that uh, that are you know that it needs a paint job but uh, and I'm not ready to get one yet for a couple years but I do need bumper fillers and I, and I need them really bad because uh, when mine uh, Mine were crumbling, and so I'm here today to uh, check out to see the the fit and finish uh, uh, of these bumper fillers, and to see how they. I just want a, a regular fill, uh, a regular look on my car, but with these new bumper fillers. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how they're going to fit, and uh, how uh, they're going to go on. Then maybe paint the whole car at a later day. We'll see how the matches between the two for now, and uh, we'll roll it out in the sun. Uh, we'll let the cards fall where they will. Let's just see what we got. Okay, well we're going to take this thing apart, and I've actually taken some of it apart. This isn't true to how you're going to take it apart, but in order to make this not an hour-long video, I've kind of streamlined it a bit. So the first thing you do, I've already taken the bumper filler out, but um, first thing you want to do is take the taillights out, and you've got on each side, and you can grab that one, you take the four wing nuts out, you slide them out just enough, and then the, uh, the bulbs will unscrew from there. Once those are out, the next thing that comes off is the bumper. And we're going to take that off. Reach underneath. I like a little ratchet box stand. are pretty easy because a couple of those are kind of tricky to get to. Go ahead and take yours off. We definitely want to. Want to help. It's kind of heavy. Help her on that. Nuts off. You ready? Yep. Straight out. Set that down. Good looking bumper. Now, a couple things I want to point out here. These studs, this is what the bumper filler mounts to. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, so I guess you got about a dozen of them. Um, from the factory, these are pointed in all different directions. Um, there are tolerances on this car that are good, there are bad. These are some of the ones that aren't so good. When I drilled my fillers, I put them where the average of they are. When you put the filler on, all these may not line up, but they should be close. Uh, we're going to put it on. We're just going to see how it lines up. One of my new bumper fillers has, has not been on this car, so we're just going to see how it lines up. We have not test fit it. We're just going to see where the cards lie on that. A lot of times, these are pointing at odd directions, so what you want to do is kind of side them all. Just make sure they're all pointed towards the back of the car. Uh, most of them are not. If you need to straighten one, like I've got a little bent one over here. I like a deep well spark plug socket. You can just kind of just, just kind of tweak it a little so they line up. Uh, once they're all straight, that'll allow the new filler to go on there. 
uh, without having to oblong the holes any more than you have to. And you shouldn't, most of the holes usually actually do line up on these things. And, uh, but we're gonna uh, see how it fits. Um, another thing, when we put it on, the first thing we wanna line up is the outside fenders on the filler. So you put it on and you, you oblong the holes if you have to, to get it centered out and it should flush out. I checked the tolerances on these cars when we're, and I checked a dozen cars, and actually the tolerances on the overall width on this, on the 10 cars, were all within about a 30 seconds. So there's no reason these shouldn't line up. Now, unless your car's been hit, or you've replaced the quarter panels, maybe due to some rust, and even then, there, there's a couple tricks you can do, and I'll show you to, to make those tweak to line up, but you shouldn't have to do that. Um, anyways, uh, on the centerpiece here, the license plate frame, this was another thing that was not lined up very well from the factory. These st some of these are slotted and some of them are not. And the way to tell, go ahead, John, put your, your tail light back in. I'm just letting the bulbs hang for now. Put it in there. And when you tighten these down, the gaps between the tail light, if you notice, this one is about twice the size of this one. Uh, the reason is, because this isn't centered. It looks like this needs to go that way about a sixteenth of an inch. That is important on this because on the fillers, once we line the filler up to the edge of the car, I cut these to fit real tight in here. I like things to fit tight and that's just how I made them. So you may need to shift this over a sixteenth of an inch for it to line up with these holes. Um, and also it's gonna look nicer and that's the way it should be. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, get the bumper filler on. First, uh, let's just take these back off. And yeah, that's fine. What I like to do to get the tail lights out of the way, go ahead and lift those up, grab some tape there. This will get them out of the way. Kind of tape them up and around. Okay. First of all, John, this, I have not had one of my front bumper or my rear bumper fillers on this car yet, correct? My new bumper fillers. New bumper fillers, not okay. on yet. So we're going to just put it on, see how it, this is first, this is take one. We're just going to see how it lines up. Let the cards fall how they were. Let's, uh, there it is. And if you look, uh, all my fillers, front and rear, I do sign them and number them. This is 20. I've had this one, saving this one for you for a while, but uh, Appreciate this, that. Is, this is just how they go. So let's uh, see what happens. And here's where the wires should be coming through, so you may have to move them around a little bit. Okay. Uh, let's see what we got. Need a big hammer? I think so. Need something there. Okay, wires are starting to line up. Yep. That actually, it fit on really nice on my side. Uh, plugs are lining up. Maybe the gas cap. taking the gas cap off. That'd be nice. How are yours lining up? Hot diggity. What do you know about that? Wow. Fit in. Mine fit on really nice on this side, but. Uh, Mine fits really good up at the top, and on the bottom, the bumper filler's in about a sixteenth of an inch. Now what you can do, and hey, sure enough, I'm looking at the reference here, and just like I said, remember I said this needed to go over about a sixteenth of an inch? You did. On the, due to the gaps, I'm looking at my filler, and what do you know? This needs to go over about a sixteenth of an inch, and then those holes will line up. So we'll, we'll address that in a second. Perfect. But what I want to do, down on the bottom here, this uh, bumper filler needs to needs to come out about a sixteenth of an inch. So what you can do, you can take it off, get a round file, and I mean, that's pretty good. This is the first time ever on this car, everything fit right on. All holes, all dozen holes. So I think that's pretty good odds for, uh, that, that ain't bad. It's so, amazing. And that, that's pretty typical. Um, the hole that I'm gonna have to move, just to get it to line up perfect with the fender, I can take a round file and I can kind of move that over. I'll show you another little trick you can do. You don't have a round file. And try to sneak in here. Pull that up. Okay. I'm going to pull it towards me in the direction it needs to go. That's a cheater round file. I'm using the stud threads up and down there to slide it. A little more. I just move that over about a sixteenth. 
Okay, take a look at that. How are you looking over here? You know what? It might be able to come out just a little bit. That's pretty darn good. And maybe just easier to have, have the screws uh, or ha actually have I'm the I'm going to show that over. right out of the box. Let's take this camera. I'm going to move this over. Okay, this is right out of the box. This is how it fit right out of the box. So nothing special. We haven't even started adjusting this yet. That's just, I mean, first first shot right there. This needs to slide over. This needs to slide over. You see the gap there and the gap there. This will slide over about a sixteenth of an inch. These slots in here, we can slot one of those, and this will move over, and that'll put our gaps here even because they weren't from the factory. Let's look over here. And that's looking pretty darn good there. Not sure how this video is going to turn out, but line looks nice. Once we tighten this down, that gap will close up. That's not anything I'm worried about yet. And that's that. Well, let's go ahead and get some screws in. Don't over tighten these screws. And also, you should have extra. So if some of these are stripped, these cheesy little screws that hold the filler on. If you notice mine, I don't use as many. There's a couple studs, two on each side that I don't use. Uh, so you should have four extras of these. So whatever the stripped ones are, you can throw them away and just uh, use the best ones. And these are so rigid. They're very overbuilt. This is hand laid fiberglass made in the USA. They're very rigid. You don't need all the bolts. We've gone ahead and uh, loosened up all the bolts on the license plate frame. Now if you notice in the plastic, this is already slotted. That's an oversized hole. That is an oversized hole in the plastic. That's the only one that fits tight. So what I did, took it off, took a round file, and I just moved that hole over about a oh, sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. And we're going to put it back on. I'm not even going to disconnect the cables or anything. And that will allow us to slide that back and forth. It will slide to the left, and that should get our gap about where we want it. Before I put those nuts back on, you don't want to over tighten those nuts. They are just cheesy little sheet metal. They will strip out real easy. John, let's grab the grab the filler. Let's put that back on. Try not to clobber the camera. See if we can sneak that in. See how that goes on. We already had it on once. There we go. Now, what we can do is push that over a little bit. Get that on. And we can put that over. Look for that hole. It goes right about there. And once we get that snugged on, it looks like looks like it's really lined up. That should line up nice. Once we get that, it should go right about. That goes over and that goes there. Let me go ahead and get some screws in there and see how it lines up. Well, there we've gone ahead and um, drilled that hole. We moved that over, and once we did that, it just moved over about a eh, sixteenth to an eighth. Uh, then this just dropped right in. Now these line up, and I suspect that now, once we put our tail lights in, the gaps will be even here. We just centered that out. Uh, also, we tightened down. I put this bolt on and this bolt. I haven't tightened these yet. I'm ready to go ahead and tighten those four on the backing plate because this is still kind of loose. But uh, once we do that, um, I went ahead and put the uh, screws, all the screws in the bumper filler. So it is mounted down. Now, when you screw this bumper filler on, there is about an eighth of an inch gap behind this one here and here. And the reason I left an eighth of an inch gap in there, so as you snug it down, it tightens into this plate. Uh, some of these cars are a little different, so I want to make sure this looked good, because I'm not worried about this gap, because it's behind the tail light, and that allowed me to get this tighter. So if you want to stick some washers behind here, you can, but it's not needed. This thing is rigid enough, um, and if you notice, yeah, I didn't pick up on those screws. We didn't need to. These are, these are solid enough. So with that, uh, Let's go ahead and John, you ready to put a bumper on? Let's do it, uh, man. see what this thing looks like. Ugh, yikes. This is a good looking bumper. I like the smoothed out, uh, took the bump strip off of that. Okay, how are you looking there? Okay, let's see. Put holes in there. Looking good here. Okay. okay. Lift it up, start up a little high. I got about a quarter inch on my side. What do you got? Uh, about, about, about a quarter. Looks like you need to go up just a hair. Okay. That looks good. I'm going to go ahead and get one started and we'll snug it right there and see what it looks like. Yeah, that looks nice. Still looks good on my side, Mike. I got a quarter inch here. I think that's about what it should be. Yeah, this is 
doesn't line up really nice. How's that height? A quarter inch there. That looks about good. Height about, yeah. That looks pretty even. There you go. Thank you. Probably what you want to do is go ahead and tighten these down first. Yeah. And then put your tail light and then put the bumper on last in case you got to take it back off. But just to show you how to put the bumper on here, I just wanted to do that now. So. All right. And then once that's on, we'll get all our bolts on there once that's done. Uh, fit our tail lights on. I suspect these gaps are going to be nice now. And that's it. Let's see what it looks like. Well, there we have it. We've got all the screws all tightened down. Uh, these fell back into place. Uh, everything's snug. We've got all the bolts in the bumper. We put the taillights back in. We snug down all the bolts on that. Now also, these lines now line up at the same line once we slid this over and snug it up. So everything's lined up nice on that. Um, there's that. Uh, let's take a look at it. In fact, we'll probably go ahead and uh, let's back this thing. John, you want to go ahead and back this hot rod out in the sun? Let's see what it looks like. It looks nice in the shade. And usually black on black looks good in the shade, but now we're going to see what it looks like in the sun. Let's get picky here, look at it. Uh, it looks like a pretty good color match in the shade. I just want people to know what these actually look like and what they're going to get. That's a nice looking bumper. I like that smoothed out wow. bumper. There we go. Is... You look the paint, this is a little more black, that's a little more gray, but pretty darn close, you know? No, Let's, uh... This definitely beats my 25 year old bumper <laughs> fillers that were shot. But I don't know uh, if you can see this. This does have a little more gray than the paint. So in the shade, it's about a perfect match in the sun. Um, it's not quite exactly, but I'll tell you what. What do you think? Is that good enough to get you by until you're ready to paint it? You know what? This is perfect until I get it painted. Uh, I'm just surprised at how easy they went on and how simple this installation was. Very there it simple. is. So, well, Thank you. that was it. That's the install video. Um, if you have more questions on these, if you want to see pictures, if you're interested in buying them, uh, you can go on turbobuick.com and if you go to the restoration section, I've got uh, posts on there with lots of pictures. Um, just you can uh, search Spoolfuls one piece rear bumper filler or Spoolfuls uh, fiberglass front bumper fillers if you're interested in those. And there's lots more pictures and stuff and uh, links on how to buy them if you're interested. Uh, I am Spoolful from Spoolful's Garage. Uh, there we go. And I don't know about you, but I'm hungry. Me too. Go get some lunch. Thank you. John, thank you much. Beautiful car. Thanks, Mike. I'm starved. Let's go. Me too.